This is something I see all the time. It's a post on Reddit. I've wasted three years of my life and it's about somebody learning to code. So now at the age of 20, I realize I've wasted my time. Three years have slipped through my fingers and I'm left with nothing but a trail of unfinished online courses and an immense feeling of regret. This is so typical. All right, so as you can see, I actually started to code in 2021. That was my very first push to GitHub. You don't have to buy a course, but you do have to do a course. If you're trying to learn to code and you're just doing it yourself, you're finding random videos on YouTube, beginner introductions, you buy something on Udemy, then you buy another thing on another platform, maybe you're on Code Academy, maybe you try Free Code Camp. It doesn't really matter which thing you pick. You don't absolutely have to pay, but you do need a course. The problem is we start bouncing around too much. I did the Odin project, as a lot of you already know. This is what I recommend, especially if you want to do front-end development. It does offer full stack as well. The back-end part is useful. It's MongoDB and Node.js with Express, which is still very, very useful. That's what I use. That's what I know. But if you are really interested in back-end, I would suggest maybe doing a different language or something else. But this is a really great place to start. What you do is you come in and you get your all paths. I start with the foundations course, covers everything, and then you can go into your full stack JavaScript where you learn even more. The reason this is so helpful is, number one, it's a multimodal approach. So you're gonna be learning from videos, you're gonna be learning from reading documentation, which is exactly what you will do as a developer in the future, but it also has projects inside it and a Discord group. So you're not really doing it on your own. It's a very, very, very good place to learn and I highly recommend it. It's gonna take you absolutely ages. It's gonna be difficult, but at least you have a path. Every day you wake up, you're not deciding and wasting time making decisions on what am I gonna do now? What am I gonna do now? What am I gonna do now? You just know, you wake up, this is where I am at the curriculum, keep going. It's gonna be hard, but again, I highly, highly, highly recommend it and it's obviously completely free. Now, we all know that learning to code is hard but getting your first jobs can be even harder and it is going to suck if you want to get started as quickly as possible i would suggest using something like upwork that's where i got my start initially my friend recommended it to me and i got stuck in so as you can see here you can get paid quite well this is up to 50 dollars an hour this is 30 to 60 dollars per hour and again you can search on whatever range you're looking for i started off well, first of all, just as a little disclaimer, you are not gonna be getting something like $30 per hour for your first couple of jobs. You need to prove yourself, you need to build up your account. So you're gonna start off on like five euro an hour or $5 an hour, even less. And that's okay because the way you need to reframe it is I am getting paid to learn. So if I saw a job like this and it's saying 20 to 50 and it was front end development, I'm thinking, okay, well maybe I can help out with this one. I read this one earlier, not this specific one, but maybe it's not suitable. But find something that is suitable to your skill set and then undercut everybody. Do it as cheap as possible. Get in there, get experience. Make it clear to the client that you have certain sets of skills, but that you're learning and that's why you're willing to do it for less in exchange for a five-star review. A lot of these businesses are startups. They want to get stuff done inexpensively if you're only going to cost them $5 an hour a lot of people are just gonna take you on anyway. So learning Git is essential, and a lot of people don't even bother learning it initially. They're thinking, oh, I need to learn HTML, CSS, JavaScript, whatever. But Git is what your job is gonna involve. You're gonna to have to use it every single day. So this is where I learned it. I used the Odin project, as uh, many of you know already, but go through a tutorial. You need to learn how to create a repo on GitHub, how to add files to it, how to uh, maintain versions, you're going to be using branches uh, to control when you're adding different uh, features to a website, you're going to have to use different branches so you don't ruin everything else because you might be adding things that are experimental that aren't necessarily going to work and so you don't want to ruin the code for everybody. It also allows everybody to collaborate together so you could have people working on different aspects, different features and then you gradually will merge them all into the main version. And you can have the main version of your code from GitHub deployed online so it's visible to everybody on a live website. You don't want to be pushing up changes that potentially have errors into that live uh, environment. So that's called production. So learning Git is essential as well. If you're trying to do stuff uh, based off YouTube tutorials and whatever, 
you want to be using something like git clone where you can find a repo of something that's already working let's say you have a business idea and somebody has shown something like that already on YouTube, well, you can use that as a starting place for your own website and you just find their repo, you clone it locally, and then you put it up onto your own uh, server. So learning Git is essential. You must learn it. Don't postpone it. That's why I like the Odin project. You do it right out the gate. And it's something that a lot of developers ignore, especially early on. Learn to code is just one of those things where you're gonna feel dumb. This is something I like to use to explain what it's like to learn to code. So this is called the Dunning-Kruger effect. And what it is, is a graph that describes what it's like to learn things. So let's open the image in a new tab, see what that looks like. So what we have is when we first start out, why our motivation is super high, we go from knowing nothing to having really high confidence where we reach what's called Mount Stupid. And then you start to drop down to the valley of despair. And this is where we're thinking, oh my God, I feel dumb. I know nothing. And I have described this before. Then you come across and you grow, you grow in competence as time goes by. And then your confidence starts to increase gradually and you hit the plateau of sustainability. This is what it takes to learn something new you are going to feel like an idiot. You are gonna feel like you're not good enough, that you've made mistakes, that you're going in the wrong direction, that you're not meant to do this, but you are. You're just going through this learning cycle. So give yourself a bit of a break. Realize that it's not just you, it's everybody, and get on with it. Shiny object syndrome is real, and unfortunately it happens to all of us when we're learning stuff, because if you're somebody who likes to learn things, if you've started to learn to code, you probably get sidetracked a lot by learning other new things. And I was definitely one of those. And tech is really one of those situations where you get pulled in all directions because you're going to see things like when I started out, it was all blockchain. And then suddenly in the last year or two, it's become all about AI and AI and chat GPT and APIs and everything like that. Then you've also got all of the stuff that's still working around in the background, but I believe is going to come back with a bang. And that's all the metaverse stuff and everything that comes along with that and 3D. There are so many different directions to be pulled in. And if you're somebody who's just learning, you could easily think, oh, maybe I should do data science. Maybe I should do this, this, this and this. Take a step back. If you've already decided that you want to do some front end development and you've started, just stick the course. OK, the more you get into it and the further along you get in one language or one industry, the easier it's going to be to transition into other areas. If you learn front end development, then the 3D stuff is probably not going to be as much of a stretch to navigate your way into. Similarly, with the AI stuff, maybe you're not going to be training large language models, but you could be interacting with the ChatGPT API or something like that down the road. Avoid switching and flipping and flopping from one area to another. There's time to do that down, down the road. For now, just find one technology, learn it extremely well, and then transitioning from that is going to be easier. This point is an incredibly quick one. If you're a front-end developer and you don't know what to do next, learn React, okay? Everybody uses it, a lot of industries use it. If you look at all the jobs on LinkedIn, most of them want React. Some will want Angular or Vue. I suggest starting with React. If you look on Upwork or other freelancing platforms, they ask you to learn React, so just learn it. As you're learning to code, you're gonna be building out a load of different projects and you should be starting to put together some kind of a portfolio. But the problem is when you're learning to code, most of your projects are gonna be real basic and nobody, I think we all know this, is gonna hire you either in a freelancing capacity or for a job or even in a free internship if you don't have some kind of a portfolio. The issue is when we build our portfolio projects and they are all things like this, okay? A to-do app is a great way to get started. You're gonna learn the basics of full stack development if you're using a database or maybe you just use local storage, whatever. It's a really good way to learn how to use things like React, getting the basics of use state and all of these other cool features that we have to know because you do need to know React. But it's not gonna cut it for your portfolio. If you're gonna make portfolio and you wanna save time, um, you can use starter templates. And this is what I recommend because I think your portfolio projects need to have 
more features. They need to be feature rich. So you can actually start using some of the free templates. Like if you are gonna use something like Next.js, which is what I use personally, I'd be using these starter templates to get going. I don't wanna be wasting time setting up all loads of extra work as a side project just to get more work. I'd rather be just getting the work. That's paid work and getting paid to learn. So to get to that point, you can use one of these templates. Now some of these start out, they're all free, first of all, which is obviously great. But the second thing is you can get really cool features. So this is a AI chatbot. That is a nice portfolio project to have and you can go in there and just tweak things and make it your own. You can have things that include, let me see if I can find one here, but there are ones that include payments. Let's see, there's CMS, let's see SaaS. And you can see some of these templates are already ready to go. Live video course, starter kit, enterprise boilerplate. Some of these do include uh, Stripe. Here's a Stripe one. That's a really, really cool feature. And if somebody like a recruiter comes onto your page and they see on your portfolio that you've got this type of stuff with these types of features, you're gonna get the job. So I highly, highly recommend pulling from these starter packs, adjusting it. Maybe you wanna add your own flair to it. You wanna change your own styles. At the very least, you're going to have to go in there and change the copy and what the whole business thing is. But this is a really good, good way to start. So this one here is using Superbase, which is kind of like Firebase, but I believe it's a bit more open source. You can have Stripe, which is the main one used essentially, and it's got the webhooks already involved. You can click in and see what it looks like already. So you could have something like this, really simple as a portfolio project, and I think people are gonna love that. CSS might seem really easy when you first start out and you're doing HTML and you're just changing the color of fonts and whatever, then it starts to get a little bit trickier when you start to bring in things like Grid and Flexbox, but learning advanced CSS is a lot harder than you think, but way more important than you think. If you wanna set yourself apart from all the other people who are learning to code, Go deep on CSS, learn about animations, learn how to use Z index to layer things, learn how to change the page when somebody scrolls down it. And additionally, it's important to learn frameworks because the vast majority of big companies are not just using CSS as it is. They might be using stuff like SAS or SCSS. A lot of times they're gonna be using Tailwind nowadays specifically, and then even using different libraries. So get familiar with CSS, get really, really good at it, and then learning the libraries and the frameworks afterwards is gonna come easy. But go deep with CSS, because if you're a front-end developer, it is, it is most of what I do, to be honest, and it, it's actually really fun once you get used to it. So go deep with it and focus on it. When we're learning things, we might wanna be completely independent and we think, okay, I'm gonna solve this problem on my own. I'm gonna go through it with pseudocode. I'm gonna write it out in the layers. I'm gonna figure it out. That's a really good way to learn when you're first getting started. But if you are on a problem for more than an hour and it's something that you're struggling with, use Google, okay? My first reaction if I don't know how to do something is ChatGPT or Google. The only reason I would use Google nowadays is because sometimes ChatGPT is a little bit out of date or it's not up to date with the docs. So again, I'd be using Google straight away to try and sift through the internet to find answers that I can copy and paste and adjust for my project. Similarly, I'll be using ChatGPT, giving it as much context as possible and asking very specific questions. Learning basics of ChatGPT prompting is gonna help you a ton. So get deep into that and it's gonna set you apart from all the other beginners who are either using that stuff too much or not, not using it at all. One of the biggest problems with people who are learning to code on their own and they're using YouTube and they're using video courses and whatever they're using, the problem is they're not reading the documentation and this is what's gonna set you apart from 99% of the beginners who are learning to code because they just do not read documentation. If you wanna learn something like React or Next.js, read the documentation. So many people get stuck in with following a tutorial or they're watching something on YouTube, but they never actually go through the documentation to understand what's going on. This is going to blow your mind. It's really overwhelming initially when you first arrive at a website and you see all of this huge list of documentation. I'm not saying that you have to read absolutely everything about every single technology that you use, 
But if it is a JavaScript framework like uh, React or Next that you are gonna be using day to day, it makes a lot of sense to go through the intro tutorial. You can just hit the getting started, scroll through this, go through all of the steps and follow their tutorial because they have set it up as experts who built the technology in order to teach you how it works. If you're gonna be using the app router or the page router, know what those differences are. This is where the answers come from and this is what you should be looking at if you're just getting started. So read the documentation, whether that be learning JavaScript, whether that be CSS, there is documentation out there to help you, so use it. Applying these tips is gonna really set you apart from all the other people who are learning to code. And if you want to learn even more tips on how we learn in general to take learning anything to the next level, you can check out this video on the biggest myth in education.